What the hell are you doing? Why should you buy from Feminine Industries? What are you talking about? Why do you keep throwing water at me? Why should you buy from Feminine Industries? Because we have wheels, tires, and suspension, and economy, all right? Zero percent finance can guarantee quick delivery. Day. That's right. But if I'm right, why do you keep throwing water at me? I had three buckets. <laughs> What's up guys, today we're going to show you how to take some dope photos of your car, but first, we're going to go get this thing a wash, it's f***ing dirty. Alright, we got it all cleaned up, I probably just put a bunch of streaks in my window, but that's okay. Um, now we're going to go to the location and get some dope photos. All right, so we made it to our location. We decided to go in this parking garage because it's nice, shaded, soft lighting. We didn't shoot outside because it's about noon right now and you get really harsh lighting, especially on a day like today where it's really sunny. And with that, you get a lot of contrast. So you might not see some of the things around the wheel well that might go all black and uh, you're not gonna see much of the detail in there of like the tires and other things. So we decided to come here, but let's go and show you guys how to shoot these photos. So first, I'm gonna go over some tips on how to shoot on a cell phone. Now, you don't need the best phone in the world. I just have a cracked ass iPhone 10. It is what it is. Um, first thing you wanna do, make sure your lens is nice and clean. I don't recommend using your shirt, but if it's all you got, it's all you got. My phone's already cracked, so I'm gonna do that. I usually like to set up the grid. So right away, I set up the grid. I have these lines running up and down, and it kinda helps you center your car and frame. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, I like to get low to the ground, especially if you have a low car. Mine's not that low, it's just on springs, but it still kind of adds to the effect. But if you're like slammed, super slammed, low to the ground, it'll really help show off how low your car actually is. Um, so yeah, you get a nice perspective when you're nice and low to the ground like this. Tip number three, you can adjust your exposure on iPhones. So if you just tap and drag your finger up and down, it'll get brighter and dimmer. Um, usually, iPhone is pretty good with uh, kind of auto adjusting your exposure, but say you have something in the background that's super, super bright and kind of blowing out, you can just tap and lower your exposure and then you're good to go. If you're good at editing your photos, then you can raise your shadows and post and have a really nice looking photo. So if you're lucky enough to have a nice new phone, like my buddy Mike here, you might have multiple lenses with different focal lengths. So what that means is you have different zoom settings for different lenses. So you can do a really wide shot really kind of focuses everything towards the center of the screen right at the car. Or you can go a little bit more zoomed in. This is kind of just the normal look to it. And then you also have a 2.5 zoom, which kind of zooms it in, gives you more of a depth of field. And you can get some pretty dope close-up shots using this lens. Now that I've shown you guys some tips, the last tip I have for you is literally just practice, practice, practice. Take as many shots as you can from different angles, get creative with it. The more you do it, the better you get. So now I'm gonna show you guys my favorite angles and then we'll move on to the DSLR cameras. So like I was saying before, sometimes you'll have like really bright areas in the background but you can just tap. Sometimes the iPhone will focus right on that. Or if it doesn't, you can just slide your finger up and down. You don't want to do it too much because you don't want to make your car super, super dark. But after you snap the photo, you can then raise the shadows in post and you should have a pretty decent looking result. So now we're going to move on to some cameras. So if you own a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, odds are you know a little bit about what you're doing, like aperture and shutter speed and all that. So I'm just going to give you some of my quick tips as to what I do when I'm taking my car photos. So the first tip I wanna give is manual focus. Now, usually for the newer cameras, autofocus is really good, but sometimes you just can't beat manual focus. If you're familiar with your camera's menu system, you can usually find an option so when you're adjusting manual focus, it'll punch in nice and tight and you can make sure your focus is super, super crisp. Now tip two, it's kind of personal preference, but I like to have a nice buttery bokeh in the background. So with that, you're gonna to wanna to drop your aperture down if you have a camera or if you have a lens that has a low aperture like a 2.8 or a 1.8, drop it all the way down and you'll get that buttery bokeh that you're looking for. 
So for my third tip, I like to use the histogram. Now, not every camera will have a histogram, but most of them should. What that's gonna do is it's gonna show you your exposure. So if your histogram is topping out all the way to the right, that means you're super overexposed. When you go and edit those photos, your highlights and stuff probably aren't gonna come back and you're gonna look with a, you're gonna come back with a really washed out looking photo. Now the same goes for if it's all the way to the left. That means you're really, really underexposed. Same thing, those shadows probably aren't gonna come back when you go and edit the photos. So you wanna make sure that most of the histogram is right in the middle. See where those spikes are? Make sure that's right in the middle. That's where your exposure is gonna be the best. Now, every scenario is different. Sometimes you might wanna overexpose on purpose. Sometimes you might wanna underexpose on purpose. All depends on where you're at, what your scenery is, and what your style is. My last tip is, again, practice, practice, practice. Same thing goes for DSLR as it does for iPhones. The more you shoot, the better you'll get, but let's stop talking about it, let's be about it, and shoot some photos. All right, so now that you just got all those pictures of your car, we wanna see them, and what better way for us to see them than adding them to our gallery. So all you gotta do is go to www. All you gotta do is go to www.fitmentindustries.com forward slash add, and you can add your car there. It's super simple, and I'm about to put Brent's in right now. All right, and done. All right, so that was super easy. Now that your car is added into the gallery, give it about 24 hours and it'll be live on our website to view and show it to all your friends and heck, we'll even be able to see it too. And you might be on one of our YouTube videos, you never know. So uh, back to Brent. <laughs> all right, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you guys have any tips that you use that I missed, let me know down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget, Wheels, tire, suspension, fitmanindustries.com.